I know a lot of people are very upset about the people in Oklahoma forcing the children to have the Ten Commandments in the classroom and to have to read the Bible and have a Bible in every classroom. But as an atheist, I think this is absolutely the best thing we can do for these students. We can actually teach them what the Bible says, because I know that the people in the church pews haven't actually read the book. Take them to Exodus chapter 21, where it says that you can own slaves, you can sell your daughter as a slave, and then that you can beat them. You can beat them so severely with a rod that they're accidentally unalived a couple days later, and then there's no punishment because it's presumably an accident. Show them in Leviticus 25 verses 44 through 46, where you can own a slave for life and you can treat them harshly. Take them to Numbers chapter 31, where God and Moses agree that you can take little virgin children girls as war brides and divide them among the warriors that went to war. Take them to Deuteronomy chapter 24, where only men can get divorced and women didn't have any consent. Take them to Deuteronomy chapter 25, where if a woman doesn't produce a son for her husband and he passes away without her consent, she has to marry the brother of her deceased husband. And then go to 2 Samuel chapter 12, where God unalives David's child for David's sin, and then because of David's sin, has 10 of his wives graped by his own son. And then take them to chapter 24 of 2 Samuel, where 70,000 plus Israelites are executed for David's sin, a sin that God enticed him to commit. And then take them to 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 23 through 25, where God executes 42 children with she-bears because they made fun of his prophet's bald spot. And of course, we cannot forget all the great hits from Deuteronomy chapter 22, such as in verse 28 and 29, where you can grape a young woman as long as she's not already betrothed, and you make sure that you never divorce her after it, and you pay her father the bride price. And then earlier in chapter 22, starting in verse 13, where if a, you suspect a woman is not a virgin because she didn't bleed on her wedding night, if it turns out that she didn't bleed, you can just actually stone her. Never mind the fact that only about half of women actually bleed the first time they do the deed. That's not important. And then show them in Jeremiah 19 and Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28, where God says if they disobey him, he's going to make their pain so severe through war that they're going to resort to cannibalizing their own children. And of course, let's not forget, according to Leviticus 20.13, if a man lies with another man as he would with a woman, of course, he's going to get stoned. And if you work on the Sabbath, yep, you're stoned as well. That's the God of the Bible. He also says in the book of Exodus chapter 4, verse 11, that he's the one that creates people to be born with physical and other abnormalities. That's God's doing. He does that on purpose. And then maybe take them to the book of Job, where God executes all of Job's families, his servants, his animals, his children, just to win a bet that he made with Satan, a bet that Satan didn't instigate, God instigated. And then maybe take them to the New Testament and walk them through some of the actual theology in the New Testament, which is basically just equivalent to love me or you will burn for all of eternity, the cruelest ultimatum that has ever been born in any religious book ever. It doesn't matter if it's believable. It doesn't matter if there's evidence. You must love me or you will be burned and tortured forever. And because these kids aren't already pre-programmed to make excuses for this God, they're going to read this book with open eyes, ask appropriate questions, and they'll be atheists just like us.